A discovery in Mexico claims claims to revise the history of humans in the Americas. Here we go again for another plain English lesson. I'm Jeff. JR is the producer, and this full lesson can be found at plainenglish.com slash 285. Coming up today, two teams of archaeologists in two different parts of Mexico have made discoveries that shed light on life long ago. One team thinks it has made a big discovery about the earliest humans in the Americas. We'll see if you agree. All that and more coming up today, including the expression, which is peace together. Two recent discoveries in Mexico show just how rich that country is in archaeological history. Let's start with the splashier of the two discoveries. In central Mexico, a research team with the University of Zacatecas appears to have discovered evidence that humans were in the Americas much earlier than previously thought. The prevailing scientific opinion is that early humans crossed the Bering Strait from Asia to North America only about 13,500 years ago. Based on their findings, the researchers believe people were in that area 26,000 years ago. If that's true, based on what we know about ice sheets that once covered the area, then early humans would have had to cross into the Americas over 30,000 years ago. So if these researchers are right, then humans have been in the Americas for up to twice as long as previously thought. But that's a big if. For almost 10 years, researchers have been excavating deep into the Chiquihuite cave in the Mexican state of Zacatecas. They uncovered thousands of stones they believe were tools crafted by early humans. They also found charcoal that radiocarbon dating pegs between 12,000 and 32,000 years old. Charcoal is significant because it suggests there was human activity creating fire, but it's not clear whether it was burned by humans or whether it burned naturally. The research team didn't find any human bones, but they did find some human DNA in the sediment layers nearby. However, since it's not possible to accurately date human DNA, it's unclear whether the DNA was just contamination from modern humans in the cave. The research team published its findings in the prestigious scientific journal Nature. Not everyone is buying it. The evidence in the paper has been extremely controversial, and many think it's a stretch to claim that the stone tools were created by humans. Many critics say that the recently published evidence isn't strong enough to overturn the current scientific theory about how humans got to the Americas. Some experts think it's more likely that the stones were formed by natural geological processes. 
As one expert put it, humans don't have a monopoly on the physics required to break rocks. Ouch. In another story, local residents in the central Mexican state of Puebla recently found two ancient stone monuments on a mountaintop. The monuments are believed to date back more than 1,500 years to the 6th century Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica is a historical region in modern-day Central America spanning parts of what is now Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. Some of the most well-known Mesoamerican cultures are the Maya and the Aztec. There were many unique cultures during this time, but Mesoamerican people are broadly known for their advanced pictographic writing systems, for following a 260-day ritual calendar, and for believing in many gods within each culture. To get to the mountaintop site where the monuments were found is not an easy feat. You would have to hike about two and a half hours along a rocky path and climb up to a height of 6,000 feet, so it's no wonder that locals stumbled upon the site before archaeologists did. It's also not surprising that the monuments were found in Puebla. The area is rich with hidden archaeological gems from thousands of years of indigenous settlement. The recent excavation has unearthed two large etched stone panels and many smaller carved stones that are all well-preserved. In total, 87 glyphs, or symbols, have been found so far, hinting at a sophisticated writing style. The glyphs are helping archaeologists piece together what life was like there in the 6th century. Some of the carvings depict horned figures and animals, including iguanas and eagles. There is also a large female figure in one of the glyphs, possibly a goddess that resembles a bat. Experts are still analyzing the site. It's a very long, careful process, but they think it might have been built by the Sapotecs. They are a Mesoamerican culture that populated modern-day Puebla in Mexico, originating there about 2,500 years ago. Sapotecs are known as the Cloud People because the leaders believed that they descended from supernatural beings who lived in the clouds. After they died, they believed they would return to the clouds to be with their supernatural ancestors. Experts say the leaders' homes would have been located at the top of the mountain, close to where the monuments were found and closest to the clouds. We have a winner. No, we have three winners. When we debuted the new website back in June, we included a free coronavirus writing challenge. It was a five-day course, and it's part of all membership levels at Plain English, including the free level. And at the end of the course, you have the chance to produce your own written essay about your experience with the coronavirus. I said that anyone who finished by June 30th would have the chance to win some prizes, so we have three winners. 
They are in third place, Christian from Italy. In second place, Arwa from the United Arab Emirates. And in first place, Camila from Brazil. Now look, there were a lot of submissions and I read them all. Believe it or not, I read them all and they were honestly all great. Dozens of you finished that course and produced a final description of your experience with the virus. As I was reading these, I had this sinking feeling in my stomach when I realized I could only pick three winners. It was hard, but I did it. Congratulations to all of you who finished the course, but big congratulations to Christian, Arwa, and Camila. Now, for their efforts, Arwa and Christian will receive a free Kindle ebook of their choice, and I have offered to work directly with Camila to help her even more on her excellent final product. So three winners, three prizes. The writing course is still open. You do have to be a member, though, and it's included in the free membership. If you're not yet a member, you can join right from the homepage at plainenglish.com. If you are a member, you can see a link to the course on your dashboard. Today's expression is piece together when you make something by putting together many pieces from many different places, then you are piecing it together. Let's start with the easier, more literal way of using piece together. The Field Museum in Chicago is now open. There is a huge dinosaur, a Tyrannosaurus rex named Sue. She is one of the largest and most complete dinosaur skeletons ever found on this earth. She was not discovered fully intact. Scientists, including Sue Hendrickson, after whom the dinosaur is named, had to find all the pieces in South Dakota, part of the United States. Then, once they had the bones, they had to piece together the skeleton. They had all the pieces, but no instruction manual. They had to piece it together. They had to use their existing knowledge and all the pieces before them to put it together. They created a whole out of many pieces from many different places. You can piece together a meal. That's easier than piecing together a dinosaur, believe me. Now, when you piece together a meal, you don't have a plan, no grand recipe to cook that night, but you look in your cupboard, you look in the fridge, you look at everything you have, and you think about by using a little leftover this, a little of that, and something from way back in the fridge, I could make something that at least resembles a meal. You're putting pieces together from many different places. A little leftover pasta from last night, a chicken breast you found in the freezer, some diced up peppers and onions that you didn't know what to do with. That's piecing together a meal. It's not going to win any prizes. It won't be on the cover of a magazine, but it works. You piece it together. When you piece together a mystery, you solve the mystery by gradually collecting the clues and forming a theory about what happened. And that's how you heard it earlier today. We were talking about a new discovery of hieroglyphs on a mountaintop 
in Mexico. And this discovery will help scientists piece together what it was like to live in the 6th century in Mesoamerica. Piece together because we don't know for sure. We have to look for clues and form them into a theory or an explanation. We talked about the unfortunate case of the students in Panama who were killed on their way back from a swimming trip. Police there are trying to piece together what happened. They have witness statements, evidence at the scene, maybe WhatsApp messages or social media posts, interviews with friends and family of the victims, and much more. They'll have to take all the evidence and piece it together to figure out what happened. It's time for JR's Song of the Week. It's called Riptide by the Australian singer Vance Joy. I asked JR why he selected this one, and he said, just because I like it. Well, that's a good enough reason for me. A riptide happens at a beach, and it's when the tide pulls water through a small inlet in the beach. It's dangerous because if you're swimming and you get caught in a riptide, it can carry you far out to sea. That's where it gets its title from. Riptide by Vance Joy is the song of the week, and you can always find your song of the week by searching Plain English Playlist on Spotify. Well, that's all for today. If you ever have the chance to visit Mexico City, then I highly recommend the Archaeology Museum there. It's one of my favorites in the world. I go almost every time I'm in Mexico's capital city. There are some really incredible artifacts from ancient cultures, some of them as tall as a three-story building. It's a great way to spend a day. Hey, if you enjoyed today's lesson, then you would love being a member of Plain English Plus, our membership for people who are ready to take that next step in English. A Plus membership includes video lessons, exercises, translations, live calls on Zoom, those are fun, a supportive community, and much more. To learn more about becoming a Plus member, just visit plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S, plainenglish.com slash plus. See you next time.